Hello, everyone. How's your day today? How's your weekend? Um, happy Monday. Um, hope everyone had a great weekend and also having a great day today. I had a good weekend. It was pretty quick, but it was good. Didn't do much. It's at home. So today, woke up late. Looking out the window, man, it looks like it is about to storm. So, you know, on those stormy days, you really want to just be at home and really relax. But that's how my day is going so far today. So, how is you all's day today? Hope it's relaxing and going great. So, a recap from Friday. Um, let's see. Genesis 37. We read about Joseph. And um, remember, he had two dreams. Joseph is the son of Jacob, whose now name is Israel. So he is the son of Jacob and Rachel. And um, Joseph, his brothers hated him. His um, father, Jacob, loved him more than all the other brothers. And so, of course, his brother, all his brothers, he had 11 brothers, and they hated that. So they hated him. So um, Joseph had two different dreams. And those two different dreams he had, he told his brothers about it. And basically, those dreams indicated that, um, uh, well, one of the dreams where he had uh it, he was he dreamed of a sheep that rose up and it stood upright and the other sheep that were gathered had bowed down to his uh, sheep and of course another dream he had dreamed it was about um the sun moon and 11 stars that bowed down to him as well so of course him telling his brothers this dream they already hated him but within that dream within him telling him those dreams of course they hated him even more so um of course, they plotted to kill him. One of the brothers tried to save him, so he suggested one idea. And of course, they ended up changing. Um, so they, of course, they threw him in a cistern. And of course, um, they ended up deciding, okay, well, we're not going to kill him. So let's just go ahead. Let's just sell him. So of course, his brother sold him. Then they lied to the father and told the father that he was um, killed by some animal a ferocious animal so of course father believing that his son was dead so he mourned the loss of his um son and joseph was sold in egypt to potiphar so that's what we left off at in um genesis 37 so here we are in genesis 38 judah and tamar so we're going to get right into that. We're going to do a word of prayer and then we'll get right into this scripture and see what this talks about with Joseph. Dear God, thank you so much for seeing us through the weekend, God, and for bringing us safely to another day. God, we thank you for your covering and your blessings upon us today. And God, we thank you for insight. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence, God. I ask that you please forgive us of our sins and wash us clean of all sins. And God, just please direct us today and just be with us and protect us, Lord. As I read your word, Father, I ask that you bless my mind, my ears, my eyes, and my mouth, Father, as I speak and read your words, Father. And I ask that you please give me wisdom and understanding in it, Father. And those that will listen and come on today, Father, and other days, Father, I ask that you bring understanding and wisdom to their ears and mind as well, Father. Help us to learn together and continue to share with one another, Lord God, and Help us to just continue to stay in your word, Father, and study your word, Father, and meditate on your word, Father. And please help us to apply your word each and every day of our lives, Father. So, Father, whatever word, whatever insight you have for us today, Father, help us to um, understand it and gather it, Father, and help us to be blessed by it. We thank you so much, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, God. I have my family. I get so hot. 
Okay. All right. So um, Genesis 38 reads. At that time, Judah left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Adullam named Hira. There Judah met the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. He married her and lay with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son who was named Ur. She conceived again and gave birth to a son and named him Onan. She gave birth to still another son and named him Shelah. It was at Kizib that she gave birth to him. Okay. So this is um, Judah and Tamar. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Tamar, but this is Judah who um, married um, a Canaanite woman, which was Shua. And of course, they got married and she um, conceived three sons he married her like third she became pregnant gave birth to a son Ur, to a son named onan and to a son named Shelah. so yeah she gave birth to three sons with um judah so judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn and her name was tamar okay so tamar is the wife of judah's son Ur which was his firstborn. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight. He was wicked. So the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, which is his second son, lie with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to produce offspring for your brother. So Judah telling his second son to lie with his deceased son's wife to have children with her. To have children with her, produce offspring for his brother, this is the deceased brother. So, um, but only knew that the offspring would not be his, which he is right. The offspring is not his. This is his um hold on offspring would not be his really not sure why it wouldn't be because he would be laying with his brother's wife his brother is deceased so not really for sure why his offspring would not be his so cuz what it says right here but only knew that the offspring would not be his so whenever he lay with his brother's wife he spilled his semen on the ground to keep from producing offspring for his brother what he did was wicked in the Lord's sight. So he put him to death also. So if um, I don't want to lean into my own understanding about this, because remember when I come on here every day, it's us learning together. So some of this I'm still learning and trying to understand. So if anyone understands this particular part where it talks about how, because it, of course, we know that, um, hold on. Okay, so Tamar was married to Ur, the firstborn. And of course, Ur was uh, wicked, so the Lord put him to death. So um, Judah told his other son to lie with his sister-in-law and to fulfill your duty to, um, to produce offspring for your brother. So my under I mean, my question would be, how would you produce offspring for your deceased brother, if you're lying with someone else, someone, um, and you're lying with them. And basically, from my understanding, you lie with somebody and they conceive a child that is your child with that person. So how would it be the offspring of the deceased uh, person, though they were married, but no longer married because they're he's deceased so i don't i'm really not understanding that part right there so if anyone understands that please let me know because that's just something i have to do a little more research on to kind of get a little understanding of how would that be his offspring his brother's offspring i would think that would be his offspring his child with 
Tamar. And of course, he knew that this offspring would be his. So when he lay with her, he allowed his semen to fall to be spilled and fall to the ground so that he wouldn't have an offspring to keep from producing offspring for his brother. So how was he able to produce offspring for his brother? Wouldn't that be the offspring for him? So give me a little understanding or insight on that you all, if anybody knows that. So that's that. So we're going to go on. So that's the part with that where, you know, he, he was told to do this from his father and he didn't want to. So, um, okay. So he spilled his semen on the ground to keep from producing offspring for his brother. What he did was wicked in the Lord's sight. So he put him to death also. So now God, the uh, God has put the two older brothers to death. So Judah then said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, "Live as a widow in your father's house until my son Sheila grows up." Because Sheila remembers the third son, which is the youngest one. So he said, "Live in my house as a widow until my son Sheila grows up." For he thought he may die too, just like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in her father's house. Okay. So after a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua died. Okay. So she died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah to the men who were shearing his sheep and his friend Hira the a Dulamite went with him. Okay. So Judah's wife died. Of course, he mourned and he recovered from his grief. So he went up to Timnah. Okay. So when Tamar was told, your father-in-law is on his way to Timnah to shear his sheep. She took off her widow's clothes, covered herself with a veil to disguise herself and then sat down at the entrance to Enam, which is on the road to Timna. For she saw that though Sheila had now grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. So when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. So the Judah saw her. Remember, she covered herself up because she heard that he was on his way. He was on his way to Timnah. So she took off her um, widow's clothes and she covered herself up as a village. So she disguised herself. So she didn't want to want to be a want to be known who she was. She didn't want him to know who she was. So she disguised herself. So um, because remember, he sent her to her father's house to wait to her youngest, his youngest son grew up to what he was of age. And of course, her hearing that he was on his way here and she knew that Sheila was of age and he had not been given to her. She had not been given to him to be his wife. So here it is. Now she's doing this. She's covering herself up, disguising herself. So when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute for she had covered her face, not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law. He went over to her by the roadside and said, come now, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you? She asked. <laughs> trade for trade. What you going to give me? Just like what a prostitute does when she lays with a man. And what does she get in return? She gets money for his pleasure. And so here it is. She's asking. She's not a prostitute, but she's presenting herself as a prostitute. And he's asking. He's saying, come on, come, come with me and, I, and sleep with me. And she's like, what you going to give me in return? So, um. Uh, he said, I'll send you a young goat from my flock, he said. Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it, she asked. He said, what pledge should I give you? Your seal and its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. So he gave them to her and slept with her and she became pregnant by him. Not even realizing this is his daughter-in-law. And she left. She took her veil and put on her widow's clothes again. 
So she deceived this man into believing that she was a prostitute when really she was a daughter-in-law the whole time. So meanwhile, Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the uh, Dulamite, in order to get his pledge back from the woman. So he's okay. But he did not find her. He asked the man who lived there, where is the shrine prostitute who was beside the road at Eniam? There hasn't been any shrine prostitute here, they said. So he went back to Judah and said, I didn't find her. Besides, the men who lived there said, there hasn't been any shrine prostitute, prostitute here. Okay. So, hold on. Then Judah said, let her keep what she has or we will become a laughing stock. After all, I did send her this young goat but you didn't find her. About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar is guilty of prostitution. And as a result, she is now pregnant. Judah said, bring her out and have her burned to death. As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these. She said, and she added, See if you recognize whose seal and cord and staff these are. Remember, he gave her these things as a um, pledge until he sent her the young goat from his flock. So um, Judah recognized them and said, she is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her to my son, Sheila. And he did not sleep with her again. And he did not sleep with her again. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin, twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his wrist and said, this one came out first. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out. And she said, so this is how you have broken out. And he was named Perez. Then his brother who had the scarlet thread on his wrist came out and he was given the name Zara. So that concludes our reading for Genesis 38, Judah and Tamar. We're seeing again, deception and, um, we see where we see she had twins. We notice um, twins are being born again. Uh, remember who had twins? Um, uh, Isaac and Rebecca had twins. Yeah, yeah. Isaac and Rebecca had twins. Jacob and Esau. And here we see now. Um, Judah having twins with his daughter-in-law who deceived him and tricked him. As he said, she is more righteous than I because he told her that um, to go back to her father's house. And when his son was old enough, his youngest son was old enough, he said, basically, he just told her to go to her father's house and live as a widow as your father's at in your father's house until my son Sheila grows up. Okay, but I guess maybe he had no intentions on giving her his son because he thought that he may die too, just like his brothers. So of course, she went and lived in her father's house, and upon. All that time, that the time that went by and she see that Sheila is old enough and he did not give him. I mean, he did not do as he said he would do and give his son, give her to him as his wife. So here it is. She came up with her own plan to um, disguise herself and then end up sleeping with her father-in-law and 
out of that, she became pregnant. And she was about to be put to death. But seems that what saved her was that this was Judah's son. This was Judah's um, ch um, child who she was pregnant by. Yeah, he was about to put her to death upon hearing. Didn't really care who she who she was. That fact that she was daughter-in-law didn't care. But finding out who, far as that she was pregnant by him and had deceived him and him not knowing this so that seems to have saved her um so hmm, what do you take from this you see a lot of deception going on here and of course with the other stories as well so my thing is how do you Okay, we know you can cover yourself up in a veil, you know, disguise yourself from someone. But how do you go as far as disguising yourself from someone to the point where y'all lay together and they still not recognize you? How do you go about that? She had to have disguised herself very well to where he never recognized her that whole time. makes you wonder was he in his right mind was he did he ever look at her did he ever pay her any mind to any fe facial features or anything like that it just makes you wonder like, a lot of questions rise about when reading this scripture and trying to understand how was it that he never knew that this was his daughter-in-law who knows <laughs> But there's the story of Judah and Tamar. So that concludes our reading, our scripture reading for today. So what insight or anything that may have rung a bell to you, that may have stood out to you, that may have you have been light on? Um, God may have invite um, lighten you on something that may have been revealed to you today. Just reading this scripture or listening to this scripture, what it what what does it speak to you? What does it say to you? Share your comments and what again? Thank you and thank you for taking the time out to listen and share. And I will talk back with you again tomorrow, God willingly. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Please not forget to love on each other, pray for each other, lift each other and help one another. And do be safe today as you go out. And just be careful and enjoy the rest of your evening. So I want to leave you all with a word of prayer and... I will get back with you all tomorrow. Father, thank you for your scripture reading and insights that you give us in your word. Some things that we may have questions on that we may not fully understand, God, but we know in your time and you will reveal all things, Father. But thank you, Father, for the insight and the learning and teaching that you do bless us with, Lord. God, just help us to be patient and help us to continue to read your scriptures and gain all the wisdom that we need in your scriptures and help us to be able to share your word with others, Lord. Father, just continue to direct our paths and keep every one of us safe today. As we go about our day today and as we're traveling out there, Lord, just Help us to be vigilant and help us to be careful and help us to be safe, Father. And God, help us, Father, to love one others, Father, as you love us, Father. Help us to pray for others and help us to care for the needs of others. 
And God, just help us to abide in your word, Father. Help us to understand how important it is to read your scriptures, Father. And help us to understand how important it is to abide in your scriptures, Father. Help us, Father, to be wise in your word, Father. And help us to not lean onto our own understanding, Father. Because sometimes it's easy to do so, Father. But as we read it, Father, help us to just meditate on it, Father. And whatever it is that we don't understand, help us to just ask you for Ask you for the wisdom, Father. But continue to direct us and order every step of ours, Father, and show us the way. And bless others, Father, as they listen each day, Father. Help us, Father, continue to learn together, Lord, and share your word together, Father, so that we can understand what it means, Father. Thank you so much for it, Lord. Continue to be with us, Father, and continue to share your love, your wisdom, and your spirit upon us. We thank you so much, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, and I will talk back with you tomorrow.